Senior Distinguished Fellow at the University of Chicago Law School and a Senior Advisor to the Obama Foundation. She serves as Chair of the Board of When We All Vote and Co-Chair of the United State of Women. She was the longest serving Senior Advisor to President Barack Obama. Ms. Jarrett oversaw the offices of public engagement and intergovernmental affairs and chaired the White House Office on Women and Girls. NCJW was so proud to work closely uh, with you in that endeavor. She worked throughout her tenure at the White House to mobilize elected officials, businesses, community leaders, and diverse groups of advocates. She also led the Obama administration's efforts to expand and strengthen access to the middle class and boost American businesses and our economy. She championed the creation of equality and opportunity for all Americans and economically and politically empowering women in the United States and around the world. And she oversaw the administration's advocacy for workplace policies that empower working families. It includes equal pay, raising the minimum wage, I can hear you all cheering <laughs> from home, paid leave, paid sick days, workplace flexibility, affordable childcare, and so much more. She also led the campaigns to reform our criminal justice system, to end sexual assault and reduce gun violence. We are so very pleased to welcome you today to NCJW and AE5's Vote Safe Digital Lobby Day and our closing program. Take it away, Valerie. Thank you so much, Jody. Hello, everyone. I am so delighted to be here. And also, I want to say to Sheila and to Bonnie, thank you for your leadership. You have been terrific partners uh, for as long as I have known you, and we really appreciate that relationship. And now that we're on election season, I'm so delighted about your digital lobby day because we have to make sure that our elections are actually safe. And in the midst of a pandemic, there are greater challenges than ever before. And as you know, the United States of Women uh, and When We All Vote formed a partnership together, and you are a member of that partnership, trying to ensure that every woman in our country recognizes our responsibility to get out there and vote and to mobilize the rest of our country to do the same. So uh, I want to say a few words about both organizations and the challenge that lies ahead. So When We All Vote was created, uh, launched by former First Lady Michelle Obama a couple years ago. And our mission is simple. In a nonpartisan way, we want to change the culture in our country around voting. It was so deeply troubling and that in the last presidential election, 100 million eligible Americans didn't vote. And it's troublesome to think that people are so frustrated, disappointed, apathetic, you name the reason, in their government that they don't feel that they need to participate. And we want to change the culture, not just around the presidential race, uh, but recognizing that every single election counts and matters. It matters who's your mayor. I was just on a call with Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms from Atlanta, who's a terrific leader working on this very issue right now in Atlanta. It matters who's let leadership on the ground in the mayor's office, the city council, the prosecutors, the state legislature, the executive branch of, of, of each level of government, and the legislative branches, which provides a check and a balance. All of these elected officials affect our daily life. And I think in a sense, this pandemic has laid bare the importance of federal, state, and local quality, competent elected officials. And it's been a civic lesson for many people who didn't even necessarily know their governor's name, but they're paying attention now. They might not have known their mayor's name. They're paying attention now because those leaders are making decisions about when it is safe for us to open up and go back to work and the precautions that we need to take and how we manage through what is, you know, is a call or no virus. It's the first time this has ever happened. Uh, and uh, in our lifetime for sure. And so the decisions that are made by these people who are in positions of power have a huge impact on our daily life. And this virus is laying bare to that. But we know that there's more at stake than just how we respond to this virus. And so what we're really looking for is ways of educating and mobilizing folks to appreciate what we have to do to keep our elections safe. And so a few weeks ago, uh, Michelle Obama announced three measures that I know you all support. Number one, we have got to make sure that everyone can vote uh, by mail. And there are those who say, well, it's fraught with potential um, abuse. Well, you know what? The military have always voted by mail. Not a hint of a problem. States like 
uh, Washington State, Arizona, there are many states and cities around our country that have vote by mail, but it's not just enough to have vote by mail, we have to make it easy. Uh, the, the, uh, there are mayors around the country and governors, for example, that are already sending out um, applications where you can apply to vote by mail. We believe they should also send out the actual ballot with a self-addressed stamp, so it shouldn't cost you any more money when you wanna vote uh, than you would if you were just to walk down to your local precinct. Early vote is so important because, in particularly in a pandemic, but even before the pandemic, because you know what, not everybody can show up on election day. A lot of folks have jobs that do not have flexibility to take off in the middle of the week. Or you have a sick child, you're sick yourself, you have an exam in school, you forget. There are all kinds of reasons why people can't be expected to vote on one day. And that early vote affords more people the opportunity. We all saw those lines in Wisconsin and how devastating it was to have to choose between your exercising your right to vote and your health. We shouldn't have to choose in our country. All of our elections should be safe, they should be fair, and they should be accessible. And so lengthening that period of early vote will diminish the number of people who actually show up on election day and keep us all safer. Final point, we wanna make sure everybody can register online. In this age of technology, it doesn't make sense to have to slop down to wherever you have to register. Why can't you just go on your computer and register online? It's another way of removing those needless barriers that get in the way um, of our opportunity to exercise that right to vote. So I wanna conclude with a huge thank you. I appreciate your leadership, your partnership, your commitment to making life for women and girls across our country better and more meaningful and more equal. And I also wanna say how, how just thrilled I am that you are joining forces in this effort to make it easier for people to vote. Our voices, the voices of women around this country are being heard and they are growing louder and louder and louder. And we know our voice can be demonstrated through our voting, but it can also be demonstrated through our organizing. And that's what you all are doing. You help organizing and mobilizing a force and showing up and lobbying, even virtual lobbying can be quite impactful as we well know. And so I know it's making a difference and I just wanna thank you. And I appreciate having had the opportunity to pop in here for a second and to, to say it virtually, but just like in person. Thank you, we appreciate you, and we look forward to making sure that in this next election and in every election, women's voices are represented and that we take the responsibility of turning out the vote for whoever your candidate might be. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us, Valerie. Where you are, we are. <laughs> So know that and um, you know we have our marching orders from you we will um, continue it we will um, organize as we have done we will mobilize and uh, we're excited uh, to be in this with you thank you for all that you are doing and you have done for women particularly around the vote thank you so much Jody and everybody please stay safe and I wish the same for you and your families thank you you as well for those of you who have just joined us, welcome to NCJW and AE5's Vote Safe Digital Lobby Day Closing Program. We're going to go through some housekeeping um, for those of you on the phone. And for those of you who are joining us by Zoom webinar, you may also see it in the chat. Um, and it's also going to be on the screen. So you'll notice that everyone's mics are muted and that cameras are turned off. And this is intentional so that we can keep the focus on our speakers. We've got some great ones lined up. Please write in the chat if you're experiencing any technical issues. We'll get to your issues as soon as we can. Please keep in mind that we've got staff available to not only answer questions but also help with technical assistance and so it may take a few minutes. This webinar does include closed captioning. Just click on the CC um, or the closed caption button that's on the bottom of your screen to turn the feature on and also to turn it off. This program is being recorded. Um, it's also on Facebook Live right now. Um, we have a very packed agenda. I do just want to take a few quick moments to uh, really quell about this day. Um, we had some incredible activity. We had 14 lobby visits, um, and we're still gathering all the data. Um, we had a total of 31 organizations involved. We had social media that reached 
59,000 people. This is all because of you all. You all did this. You lifted up what happened in Wisconsin, the need for Congress to act now to ensure safe and accessible access to the ballot for the primaries and for the election. And it's just tremendous what you all have done with your time, with your enthusiasm. And of course, we wanna hear all about what you all have done today, how you took action and get the feedback. Um, there is a poll that I believe is going around um, and you are also going to be um, getting an evaluation, which I'll talk, oh, here's the poll. <laughs> here's the poll. We'd love for you to fill out the poll about how you took action today so we can get a better sense from folks on the call. And while you're doing that, I want to introduce our next speaker. We are so privileged to have with us Robin Leeds. She serves on NCJW Inc's national board while working at the Clinton White House on um, the Office of Women's Initiatives and Outreach. Robin coordinated domestic public policy and constituent engagement efforts. She led numerous domestic and international outreach efforts. She played a lead role, a tremendous role, in the passage and the implementation of the National Voter Registration Act, and she has long worked to mobilize women voters and to inform policy positions. She's the founder and the managing director of Winning Strategies, LLC. It's a public affairs and political consulting firm based here in Washington, DC. Robin, take it away. Are we good? We see you, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, the, hi everyone, I, it's, I'm, so, I'm, I'm just so impressed um, with um, this digital lobbying day. It's remarkable how much can get done um, uh, online. And as we're all so used to gathering together and getting dressed up and going up to the hill and, you know, you know, carrying around our bags and just being connected with people directly. I think we've really risen to the occasion. So it's it's really very exciting. Uh, as Jody said, uh, this issue of uh, voter mobilization and uh, voting rights has been near and dear to my heart uh, since uh, the early 80s when I ran an organization called Human Serve, which was focused on registering uh, recipients of public of public benefits um, in human service agencies. And um, this was mainly focused on women and people of color, um, generally low income disenfranchised groups um, by using health centers and unemployment offices and community based organizations to actually reach people where they came to either pick up food stamps or, or apply for WIC or get unemployment checks or get, you know, child, child care, day, you know, daycare, whatever kind of care. Um, and it was, a, it was a great way of interacting um, with, with the disenfranchised uh, public. And that really was a precursor to uh, the national, uh, the passage of Motor Voter, the National Voter Registration Act. Um, which happened, it was the second bill that President Clinton signed into law after family and medical leave. And um, my first job in the administration was to uh, implement or try to implement the National Voter Registration Act in WIC food stamps and AFDC. And uh, it, was, it was very exciting. There were, of course, per usual, lots of barriers, lots of obstacles, but uh, you know, as we all say, we and she will persist. So I continue to work on this issue. Um, it's been incredible to work with NCJW that, you know, has a reach across the country and can really connect the issues that we care about and that women care about to our fundamental right to vote. And I think we all know that unless women vote, women will not move 
uh, any of their agenda items forward, no matter what they are. And that, that the critical element of maintaining and building our democracy, particularly, particularly in these times when we're facing so many threats is absolutely the most important thing that we can do, what, that we can do uh, right now and, and through this election cycle. Uh, and so I just wanted to say that I'm very excited about not only our public policy agenda, but our safe vote agenda. We now unfortunately have one more barrier uh, added to the list of thousands uh, that disenfranchised folks face uh, when they try to register and vote. And so we're, we're up against, we're really up against uh, a tall mountain, but I think together we can, we can really conquer that and move through this crisis uh, and really turn out in large numbers and educate uh, everyone, everyone we know uh, and who we work with and in our communities, et cetera, the importance of the, the of, of the safe vote and what that's going to mean for us going forward. So thank you so much for including me in this. I'm extremely excited about the progress we made not only today, but what we're looking forward to. And uh, I really think we can make a difference. So I look forward to working with you guys going forward. Thank you so much, Robin, and we love working with you and um, we will continue to do so. I wanted to uh, share the results of the poll, which I know is quick, um, but we had 46% of those taking the poll took action through a virtual lobby visit, 35% called their lawmakers, 28% sent an action alert, hopefully it was ours, and CJWs, and 46% utilized social media to get the ask out there, um, which is incredibly exciting. Um, so thank you for you all for indulging us and in taking that quick, uh, quick poll. Uh, we are going to move on. We have another speaker from National Council of Jewish Women, our national president, Beatrice Khan. We have asked her to share her story of advocacy today. Um, she met with Senator Schumer's office. Beatrice, I'd love to pass it over to you. Great, thanks, Jody. Hi, everybody. So what an amazing day. Um, thank you to everybody who made it happen, especially the organizers and the staff and also the almost 800 advocates, all of us who participated in this wonderful opportunity to, to speak out. Um, I was part of the New York delegation that visited uh, virtually with Senator Schumer's staffer and it was really a wonderful meeting. It was collaborative. There were several organizations met, uh, represented, several NCJW sections, affiliate chapters. There were people from across our state and several people had speaking roles. So um, it was really a, a wonderful experience. We were very lucky to be meeting with someone who is passionate about the issue and shares our point of view and yet um, was eager to hear from us. Um, we had the opportunity to explain our organization, to start building a relationship with Continue. We've met with him on another occasion and, and that's important in advocacy. And then also to really make clear how important we feel it is that um, we have access to uh, accessible, safe, um, and voting. That's, it's a right, and we must fight for it. So I think it was an empowering experience for everybody. Um, I, we felt heard on the issue. We were very lucky in that regard. Not every uh, state has, can, uh, can we say that? And I think that uh, the, the participants came out of it passionate and um, feeling the confidence that I hope will uh, move them to do this again sometime. So um, I'm grateful that we had this opportunity. Uh, I think um, somebody said never let a crisis go to waste. And so I think this has been an opportunity to learn new ways of doing advocacy. And um, I really appreciated this opportunity and felt that we were heard and were able to make an impact today. So thank you to everybody who participated. Thank you, Beatrice. That can be our hashtag the next time we do this, let a crisis go to waste. 
appreciate that and love seeing in the chat all the feedback on the visits and um, who you met with and who you spoke with. Keep it coming and you'll have an opportunity to tell us a little bit more um, because we'll have an evaluation coming your way. Before we get to that, um, I do want to bring us to a close, but I've got a few more things to say, so I hope that you'll stick with me. Um, we really just can't thank you enough for all the impact that you made today and for uh, raising awareness about this critical issue at this really particularly critical moment. Um, don't forget that had calls and uh, Zoom meetings with staff and or lawmakers to send your thank you notes. It's also a terrific opportunity to clarify something um, that maybe you felt like you didn't get right in your meeting, to share something that you wish you had said, um, and or to include follow-up that you promised. So um, that's also a great opportunity to continue to get your point across. And if you need any language, you can feel free to pull it from the toolkit. Um, in addition, after today, we want to ask you to go further. We want you to lobby your state elected officials for voting reforms. We're going to be sending an email out after um, this program ends. I know I've been teasing it, and it's going to tell you how to take action at the state level. Um, the email will also include a link to an evaluation um, about today's Vote Safe Digital Lobby Day. We ask that you please complete it so that we can not only measure our collective impact, but so that we can improve future efforts. Um, who knows, we might be doing this again sometime soon um, and we wanna learn from today. So completing that evaluation will really help us do better by all of you. Um, you'll also receive some sample social media to celebrate our accomplishments today and we hope that you'll utilize them on whatever platform is comfortable for you. And of course, we are big on sharing our recordings. So you will get recordings from this morning and from this afternoon. I also want you to be aware of future NCJW events and webinars, and one in particular coming up uh, this Tuesday, May 26th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, fresh off Memorial Day weekend. Um, it is a webinar on the Jewish Case for Abortion Access discussion study and the launch of NCJW's Abortion and Jewish Values Toolkit. Um, many, many, many months in the making. You won't want to miss this. We um, have an incredible lineup, as you can see, NCJW Board Vice President, Rabbi Lori Kaufman, um, Aleph Alliance for Jewish Renewal Executive Director, Suji Min Miranda, Rabbi Tanya Ruttenberg, our very own, and Rabbi Rachel Timiner. Um, you can see where you can register. You can also go to our website um, if you don't have a chance to get this down and you can register on ncjw.org as well. I really want to thank our speakers this afternoon, Valerie Jarrett, Robin Leeds, Beatrice Khan. A huge shout out to Sheila Katz, Bonnie Wunsch, and to the incredible NCJW staff. Um, many of you had a chance to work with them today on setting up your lobby visits. Some joined you for your lobby visits, um, but it really uh, took a, a team to help make this happen. And of course, we couldn't have done it without all of you and your willingness to uh, try this out with us. We wish you safety, good health, um, and we hope that you vote safe if your primaries are still coming up. Um, and we urge you to continue the conversation. There are many folks who weren't able to get visits today and they're set up for tomorrow or next week. Um, and as Beatrice said, you can also continue the conversation with um, another visit. So don't let today be the beginning and the end of urging lawmakers to vote safe. Um, so thank you for being with us today. Thank you for all of your advocacy work and um, we'll see you soon.